And so yeah. my shop just died. And so then I panicked. I was like, what was I thinking? This couldn't actually support my family. Like it took me that many to like really get a good handle on Etsy. Oh my gosh, Angel, you just gave me the chills. That was like a mic drop moment. Welcome everyone back to my channel. Today we have a really exciting guest on the channel. This is Angel from Passive Income Angel on YouTube. Her story is just so inspiring. I just want to say welcome, Angel. Thank you for joining me on my channel. Also, by the way, she is on YouTube. She just created a YouTube, so check her out in the links in the description below. But to get started, Angel, I just wanted to let my subscribers get to know you and your story. How did you find Etsy? and the world of print on demand. Hi, Heather. Thanks for so much for having me on. I've been really inspired by your channel to start my own YouTube channel where I talk about Etsy print on demand. So thanks again for having me on. So I started out with print on demand in 2020, like a lot of people did. I actually started before, um, you know, things, things went crazy in the spring. So I was a full-time teacher. I was an elementary school teacher and I loved my career choice. It was a really fulfilling job. It was stressful at times, but I did really enjoy it until 2018 when I had my daughter. And then I just really, really wanted something that was more flexible. If there are any teachers out there, you know that teaching kind of takes over your life. It's really long hours. You take it home with you, your work, your grading papers on the weekend. And once I had a family, I just, I didn't want it to be my whole life anymore. I wanted something that was more flexible in addition to needing, a, you know, an additional income stream to our family. I just had this idea of, I wanted to add an income stream. And of course, like most people, I went to Etsy, you know, I, um, started watching YouTube videos about how to make money on Etsy. And my first idea was actually to create jewelry. I was going to create kibosh and earrings. And I was looking at videos on how to make different types of jewelry and how to be successful in Etsy. I happened upon this idea of print and demand. And I was just like, all in. I was like, this is brilliant. You know, I can create a business, you know, a scalable business and pockets of my time without having to, you know, have house a lot of inventory. I don't have to buy a lot of inventory. I don't have to ship the items myself. And so I just got really excited and was just like all in. I was like, this is the, the way to go. Um, and then I started creating my shop. I, I spent a weekend creating my shop and adding new items to my shop. And my first sale was actually my mother-in-law just because I really wanted to understand like, well, what happens when you get an order? Because I was just like, not sure what to expect and like, when would they ship it and things like that. And so I had her make the first order and got the item and it was really good quality and everything went, went really smoothly. And it was about another week after that, that I got my first organic sale. So this would probably, it was probably about a month then. So it took me about a month to get, to get my first sale on Etsy with print and demand. And I was super excited. I remember it was in the morning, I was getting ready for work and my phone like did this ka sound. And I was like, oh my goodness, a stranger bought, you know, this random uh, item from me. And I was just so excited because I, I, I knew it worked. So I, I added the more more listings and tried to get into more niches. And it was discouraging, a little discouraging at first because it wasn't like, you know, I, I all of a sudden got bestsellers. I would get, you know, a few views a day, a few likes a day, a few favorites. And it wasn't like, you know, I didn't go crazy or anything like that. And so it was a little discouraging at first, but I'm so glad that I just kept going and kept adding listings and kept trying new things and just getting better. You know, when you first start, start listing and designing, you're not at least myself, I wasn't that good at it. I didn't know how to provide new value. I didn't know how to create things that people wanted because I was creating more of what I wanted versus what the market wanted. And so, you know, it was a, a slow progression. But once I figured it out, once I figured out, you know, by the by my 200th listing, you know, my designing was better. My SEO was better. My thumbnails were better. I just learned so much from that. And so, it, you know, I, I became more successful as I kept going along. It kept building my skills because, you know, it is a skill set, you know, learning how to design, learning how to use keywords that people are looking for, all of that that comes with time and experience. I love that so much that you started with looking to go into handmade and then you were just like, whoa, there's print on demand here. And I don't have to, you know, print, pack and ship or create my own items, pack it, ship it. I can just have this print on demand company do it for me. So I love that you found that that way. And I know you said it took a month until that first initial organic sale. So how many months would you say until you really started seeing consistent sales in your business? It was a, around my third month. I ended up getting into a niche. It was the quarantine niche and yeah. it just exploded in my shop. Like it was, it was just like, boom. Cause I did digital sales and I was doing, cause I was trying to like experiment with print and demand too. And they both took off and I ended up really, really liking the print and demand because the profit margins were slightly higher with that. It was so much fun. And I kind of thought that at first it was just like a one-off. Like I would just got lucky. I just got lucky with this niche, you know, cause it was new, but I found in time that like it was totally repeatable. As long as I was using SEO keywords that people were actually searching 
searching for. I was creating, um, you know, winning designs, which basically is, is being able to look at the market and seeing what's trending and then applying those trends to your sub niches that you're designing and to, to provide new value and then using really high quality mockups. And so I found when I was doing those things that I could reproduce those results in other niches. And so that was just really exciting. However, in the spring, um, shipping times just plummeted because of, you know, the, the situation in 2020. And so I was starting to get bad reviews because it was taking up to six weeks, you know, for items to get to my customers. And so it was really stressful. And so I actually, I almost closed the shop and I decided just to go to digital sales. And I did pretty well with that, but mm -hmm. I knew I really wanted to get back into print demand. I really just felt like that, that was where it was at for me. And so then in the fall, well, it was like late summer, I opened up another shop and I just went all in. I did really, really well. I was averaging around $30,000 in revenue by November in my new brand new shop that I had just opened up wow. in July. It was all like Halloween and Christmas and it was really exciting. I was actually making more than twice what my salary was as a teacher on top of my salary. And so it was just really exciting because I was able to save a lot of money. Um, we were able, able to pay off debt. It really changed my family's life. It really, really did. And then unfortunately in January, because I was a brand new shop, I didn't have any evergreens. It was all Christmas and Halloween. And so yeah. my shop just died. And so then I panicked. I was like, oh my goodness, I can't quit my job. What was I thinking this couldn't actually support my family. And the issue was just that I didn't have a well-rounded store. So it's really important to have those evergreens and at least for my shop to have evergreens and as well as the, the holidays. And now I have that. And so in January, my store is still, you know, getting sales and is, is busy. Yeah. It doesn't die like it did that first holiday season because I was just so all in on Christmas and the holidays that I didn't prepare my shop for what came after. Yeah, I love that you mentioned that about the evergreen and seasonal, because I think that is very valuable to anyone watching that I feel like the most common comment and email I've been getting recently just once we hit the new year was oh my gosh my sales plummeted what do I yes. do how do I get consistent sales and then I say you know hey can I look over your shop and I mm -hmm. see it's all holiday items in mm -hmm. seasonal niches and I'm like oh that is the answer to why it plummeted and it's so good that you mentioned that and that's something I kind of say a lot on my channel too is just laying your shop foundations with evergreen niches and then decorating it with those seasonal niches can really get you those all year round sales and spikes in your store. I love that you found that through your time on Etsy and that now your store is kind of getting that consistent throughout the year, not just during the holidays, but I'm sure that you get really nice spikes during the holidays as yes, well. Yes. What type of products would you say you mainly sell? Is it t-shirts, sweatshirts? Do you go into mugs or anything like that? So whenever I was brand new on Etsy, I just did everything. I just like yeah. whatever I could put my stuff on, which now I, that's not my strategy at all. Now I mostly sell t-shirts and then I sell um, sweatshirts. I should add more hoodies because I know hoodies do really well in Etsy um, and you can get higher profit margin with hoodies. I don't personally wear hoodies. I'm really bad about not adding those, but mostly it's just t-shirts. Um, Bella Cam is 3001 and then uh, comfort colors and then uh, the Gildan sweatshirt. Yeah. I love that so much. And do you do any personalization types of listings or custom in your store? So once again, whenever I was a new shop, I did a lot of them just because I, it's a great way to build your shop. I think, you know, customization, personalization, is super popular on Etsy. A lot of people come to Etsy just for those items. And I knew that because that's whenever I had shopped on Etsy personally, those were the types of items that I came to Etsy for was like, you know, to be able to put someone's name on something on a gift and things like that. And so I knew it was important and it did help, help grow my shop in the beginning. But as I became higher volume, I just didn't have the time. And I used to kind of draw away from that now because I, I, I want to create things that, that people can just buy as is printify, print them and ships them. And I don't have to do anything, you know, for it. During the holidays, I do offer some personalizations for like group family shirts because that's, those are super popular during the holidays. Definitely recommend, you know, that niche. That was one of my highest ever selling uh, niches, especially that first year on Etsy. One, just one listing, one, one group Christmas listing. I think I, I had over like $28,000 in revenue just from that one listing. Wow. It just like, it just went crazy. Don't skip the group Christmas family t-shirt niche, you know, this upcoming Q4 guys don't do it. So group niches are a really great way to scale your business on Etsy. So I love that so much. And I love that kind of like hot tip for anyone watching yeah. this video all the way through, because that is something that's really valuable. I feel like group listings take the longest, but they mm -hmm. are just so worth people's while to yes. just take in that time. And that I remember my first group listing, it took me like an hour or two to create. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is a really long time, but they sell 
really well. <laughs> so they do, they do. Yeah. And as far as your store goes, I know you mentioned you got up to 200 listings. How many listings do you have now in your store? How many listings until you really saw that maybe 30 K month in your business? I want to say between the two shops, I probably had around 2000 listings at that point. Wow. Ma that's... Maybe it was a little less than that, but it was over a thousand between both shops. And I've seen other shops that, that have less listings than that. And they they're doing really well too. But for me, that was part of my learning curve. Like it took me that many to like really get a good handle on Etsy to make things that people wanted to buy and to figure out mock-ups and SEO and, and, and title, all of those things. It took me that, that much time and that many listings to get there. You know, some people might be less. I mean, I, I hear people who like get on Etsy and they're like, it's my first week and I have my first sale. I'm like, that's amazing. You're like, you're, you're crushing it. And I, I just wasn't that person. I mean, it took me a little longer to get there. So yeah, I agree. I remember when I was on Facebook groups for print on demand, I saw mm -hmm. people posting that all the time, just saying, I got my first sale this first week that I started. And I remember how crushing it was for me yes. as a new seller. And then now look at us. I mean, we hit mm -hmm. these insane amounts that we never thought we would ever hit. And we're all so grateful for that. But like at the beginning, if anyone is in that place right now, that's watching this video, just know we were there too, where we got crushed, you know, when we we yes. saw other sellers saying, I got 10 sales in my first week, or I don't know, something insane like that. You know, I like to say that it's not about how quickly you get to the first sale. It's about the long-term game. And I feel like, you know, through us just continuously listing, I always say it on my channel, but I feel like it really does do a lot of work over time and putting up on that upfront work really can make your store long-term like your store where you were having 30 K months. Yeah. That's just so awesome that you had that, especially when you just started started it too. So do you still have the digital store then or just only? I do. Branding? I keep going like, I'm going to start adding to that shop. I would love to do more, some, some more digital just because I think it's fun. It's a little less customer service than print and demand, but I, I just, I also really, really like print and demand. So I do have a family. I think that I don't know if I, I had mentioned that previously, but I have two young children. Um, I, we, one is under a year. The other one is four years old and, you know, it just got into preschool and that's kind of like my full-time job. And so, yeah, it's definitely a struggle, you know, with time, especially whenever I was working full-time at the time, whenever I was working full-time and I was still teaching, I've been able to quit my job since then. Yeah. You know, I was able to quit my job in, in May. Thankfully, I'm so, I'm hey. so grateful, like so, so grateful. And it's just like the little things like getting to take my daughter to preschool, you know, cause she does half day. Like if I was still teaching, I don't know what we would have done. And like financially, I would have had to keep teaching even once we had our son. And so I was really grateful that things lined up so that I could quit my job after I went on maternity leave with my son. It's a struggle when you have a family, you're working full time and you're trying to do a side hustle. It's a struggle and it was a lot of work, but I was able to do it in pockets of my time, which was so valuable. You know, I had a design app on my phone. I still use it. I do, I do a little bit more design on Canva now on my desktop than I used to. When I first started out, I almost did all my designing on my phone and I could be like designing on my lunch break or it could be a doctor's office while I was waiting to be seen. I was just like constantly like either designing or listing in my free time. And I pretty much gave up social media for about a year and just did, you know, just focused on that. I would occasionally get onto social media just to get ideas for niches, but that was about it. So that really helped give me more time by giving up social media personally. Yeah. I love that so much, especially when you mentioned about the lunch breaks, because I was as well a lunch break designer. <laughs> warrior. I, yeah. Lunch break warriors. <laughs> That's our <laughs> thing, I guess, where we were both on lunch. Cause I remember I would be almost embarrassed if people saw that I was designing too. Cause I was like, you know, I I'd hide my phone <laughs> away from my coworkers and they'd be like, what are you doing? And I'm just like, Oh, you know, I have like an Etsy business that does kind of well. And I'm just taking in some custom orders on my lunch break. And they're like, um, can I see your store? And then I'd show them my store and they'd be like, this is not kind of well, Heather. And I was like, yeah, I might be quitting soon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I totally quiet quitted. Like I didn't tell anyone that I had yeah. an Etsy shop. I didn't like, I don't know why. Like I didn't even really tell that many family members. I just kind of like kept it to myself. I don't know why, but it just, I did. And it's like, oh, by the way, see you later. <laughs> yeah. I just love your story so much though, Angel, especially that you're, you know, a stay at home mom now, but you're an entrepreneur too. It's not just stay at home. You're an entrepreneur. I don't know what you would say as that type of title because you're technically mom, not entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. Mom, mom. Entrepreneur. Yeah, exactly. And that's just so inspiring because I know a lot of people who watch both of our channels are in that same boat. So to kind of wrap up this interview, 
if you began in 2023, what would you recommend to maybe other people who are stay at home and looking for that side income, or maybe they want to quit their full-time job? What would you suggest for them to do in 2023? I think it's really valuable to go on to Etsy and to find shops that are new, you know, within the last one to three years and really kind of examine those shops and see like, what niches are they in? What are the design trends? Because you're reverse engineering, you know, what people are currently looking for and buying on Etsy. And I think that's really important because success leaves clues. And I think that I would start there, which is like looking to see like, okay, what are people actually buying right now on Etsy? How can I provide new value to this market and help people express themselves clearly with my designs? And I would start there as far as like which product to choose. It's really important to go into Etsy and trying to find shops that are selling just that product. Product. Because if you can't find evidence that people are buying that product in high volume, it's probably not going to be high volume enough for you to actually make a living off of. So for example, someone um, recently asked me, you know, could I sell tea towels? Can I make a tea towel shop on Etsy? And I was just like, well, you can, but can you find shops on Etsy that are selling just tea towels and they're like crushing it? Like that have been opened in the last one or three years and they could, they didn't exist. And then I went on to E-Rank and checked, you know, the search volume and it was like not very high except for like around certain holidays. And even then it wasn't like that many a month. And so so that was a big clue that like, that just isn't high volume enough. And so then we looked at those shops that did sell them and we found what they sold ornaments. They sold other like mugs and they sold other things in a combination with those towels to round out the shop to be successful. And then it was like, okay, this is kind of what you would need to do in order to be successful in this niche. Okay. With this product. So it's really important to go into Etsy use tools like Everbee, use tools like E-Rank to check those, that search volume, that competition, and that will really help you. But there are shops that started in the last year that have gotten thousands of sales on Etsy. This is the best time to start a Etsy business because it's just getting bigger and bigger every year. Every year, Etsy is drawing more and more customers than they they, had, they did the year before. A lot of people are concerned about saturation, like, oh, it's, you know, Etsy is oversaturated. But what's so exciting about this market is that it's called fast fashion. And so if something happens today, I can make uh, design for that and get it out today. Whereas you know, somewhere like Target, they have a six month lead up time. Okay. So if something happens and they want to jump on a trend, they've got six months to a year. Sorry, I keep hitting my microphone there. Oh, you're fine. They've got six months to a year before they can get that product out to customers. Okay. I can get that in front of people, millions of people today. And there are trends that started this week that didn't exist last week. Okay. That didn't exist last month. And so there's new design trends, there's new keywords people are looking for, and there's just so much opportunity and your unique uh, creativity, you can bring that to that new trend, okay, to that new niche that didn't exist before. So if you're out there, you've been on the fence about it, give it a try and be committed. If you treat this like a hobby, you're going to get hobby results. If you treat it like a job and you're committed, you're going to get job-like results. Having that mindset can be beneficial. Oh my gosh, Angel, you just gave me the chills. That was like a mic drop moment about treating it like a hobby and you're going to get hobby results. I absolutely love that. And that's just such a great note to end on. If anyone wants to find Angel, she is at Passive Income Angel. We are doing a interview where I'm dropping golden nuggets on her channel as well. So definitely watch that interview in the link below. Thank you so much for coming on my channel today, Angel. It has been just such a pleasure to get to know your story and talk with you. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate you having me on. By the way, if you are watching this, just double check to make sure that you are subscribed to Heather. I love her content. It's so valuable. It's so inspiring. So just make sure that you are subscribed to her because I'm always like watching your premieres like, oh, look, I just got a video out because I just really enjoy your content. It's really valuable, very inspiring. So thank you so much for having me on. Yeah. Thank you so much, Angel. We'll see you guys in the next video here and watch us on Angel's channel next.